Okay. So, this season 10 reunion is well underway. This is the first part. This is the first part. And this is not like any other season that Married to Medicine has had. This season is so completely different than everything we've experienced with these ladies. Um, and I have to be very, very honest. I'm actually looking at everybody out of a completely different eye than I've looked at them the seasons prior. This is very interesting and a bit bothersome, but I got a whole bunch to say. I have a whole lot to say. Stick around because I'm going to say some things to you all that I never thought that I actually would. Some things that I never thought I would actually share, but I don't have any other choice. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on and being with me here. Like I said, this is season 10, episode one of, or part one, it's not an episode, it's part one of the reunion. There's a three-part reunion with Married to Medicine. Um, very quickly, because there was, the, this first part literally was all about Quad being gone from the show for 75% of the season is basically really what it was about. And then my whole thing was the interaction with Quad and these ladies. Um, so I'm going to skim through all this other stuff very quickly because it wasn't really all that important. First thing I saw, I thought it was kind of funny because it was just a wash and repeat. It's something we've already seen. Sweet Tea was acting her age and her shoe size. Well, maybe not her shoe size so much, but acting her age. And she ran through there and put a picture of Heavenly before she lost her weight on her dressing room door. Okay. Ha, ha, ha. You got her. All right. Again, that just goes to show, Sweet Tea, you've been watching and you're a bit corny. Cause to even try to repeat something that's been done in the past to her, like that's her karma. Yeah. Wash and repeat, corny, watching this show, end up on the show, and now trying to repeat what you're saying. Have a seat, T. Have a seat. Now, I'll give you a point for when um, you ended up um, calling Dr. Heavenly malt liquor. That was pretty funny. Well, that was funny, but whatever. Another thing that stuck out, Toya. Toya is smelling herself. Do you understand me? Toya is completely smelling herself. Toya is sitting up here with her chest poked out, and she just out of order. She's always out of order, but I mean, just really out of order. You know, Phaedra's whoever she is, fake phony, she a liar, she's all them things. All those things, but she's a lot of other things as well. I don't really care what Phaedra does. Toya, Apollo's whereabouts during Phaedra's son's birthday party is none of your damn business. It is none of your damn business. And you don't want anybody speaking on you and Eugene, then you damn well should have been speaking on her ex-husband and the relationship between her children out of order. If y'all go all the way back, isn't this what always gets her into the mess that she gets into? Season one, walk backwards with me, would you? Toya's mouth speaking on little baby Lauren and her adoption by Mariah's husband in the salon. Isn't that where all of this started from? Out in the world, running your mouth like your shit don't stink. Like you and Eugene got it all together. 
and you out there speaking on people's personal family business, but you don't want anybody doing that to you. You need to shut your mouth. And I, I didn't like that. I really didn't like that. Apollo's not a part of the show. And whatever she's doing with the raising of her kids, none of your business. None of your business. And if Phaedra would have cussed you out, she would have been fully within her rights. That was your storyline right there, Phaedra. You may not be married to medicine, but you could sure be fighting with the uh, medicine man's wife like everybody else, child. But it took me right back to what happened in the first um, the first season of Married to Medicine, Toya doing the most as usual. Um, now, Phaedra, you did what you did because you are known to not tell the truth and you absolutely do have a face for everybody. When you made the comment why about Quad and why you kind of threw her to the side because you did, you threw her under the bus, you, you chose you over the you and her dynamic. So kind of however it falls out, it falls out. But when you said, I would, why would I attach myself to the Titanic? Like you could see her going down and you weren't going down with her, period. But the writing on was the, on the wall for this. And this is what showed, this is something that's been a little bit different. Y'all have been talking about each other terrible. All of you, all of you have been talking about one another and y'all been that's what y'all been doing. Y'all been acting just like the housewives. So this is why the show now doesn't have a thing where it's like, you know, oh, my marriage to medicine is like this. And, you know, I love housewives of Atlanta, but no, y'all just like this now. Y'all just as catty and backstabbing and all of that. Y'all aren't hold. There's no more. Your nose is not in the air anymore. You all are messy as on here. Y'all are. And all y'all been doing is clicking up and talking about each other. So what do you expect? It's like Caddy on a whole different level. It's on a reality show level at this point. I don't know if that's where y'all were trying to get, but that is exactly where you all have landed. Um, uh, Heavenly, you are messy cakes. Messy. You are running around. Girl, Sheree Whitfield ain't got nothing on you, Heavenly. The only thing is, you don't give a damn. You don't give a damn. So you just come on out and say what you said, and you tell everything you did, and then you be in this. You're like really messy. Like, you real messy. Real messy. But, you know, it is what it is. I guess you don't care. You know? Not true. Not true. That's why your feelings be hurt, because you do have feelings, and your feelings do be hurt. After you did all that shit you done did. Anyway, so what we learned is that when it comes to the dynamic of Quad, Heavenly, and Phaedra, Quad and Heavenly, the two of you were talking about Phaedra. Y'all were talking about her. Y'all are both guilty. Y'all are both guilty. And the thing is, now Quad then came in here, you didn't have time to think about things and see exactly where you are and how you talked all your shit. Now you talked your shit now. You talked your good shit and I don't have a connection with you all and this, that, and the other. And they took, well, you, that's always a gamble. When you talk shit to a person, especially in their face, oh yeah, it's fierce and it makes for good TV, but you shot your wad in a gamble and then you messed around. That gamble didn't pay off because you ended up in a place where nobody wanted to film with you. And even if you are the breakout star of the show, if nobody wants to film with you, you could break out as much as you want. Where are you breaking out to? You messed around and broke out into the parking lot is what ended up happening here. And now you want to be friends. And literally, I don't know if y'all seen it, but for me, when I was looking out there in the room, Baby, it was given very much of girl by they like they're done. I, I I saw it in the beginning when they asked her to leave the trip and y'all basically banned her from the island. I said, Well, you know, because they always you know fix their problems and they always make up and all of that. You know what I mean? I saw like you know, like this whole attitude, but uh-uh, uh-uh. When 
this was going on, I was like, that energy has not shifted after all these weeks and all these months. That energy has not shifted. It is still, they are definitely still on the girl. Get up out of here. It was like that when you came into at the finale. They're like, whatever. You know, it, it was hard to watch and sad to see. It really, really was. Um, it is very reminiscent of when Mariah was, you know, sent away because it was like, girl, everybody's just tired of you. Everybody's tired of you. And I could understand it when it happened with Mariah even though I don't even like Mariah and I was glad to, to see her go. It's the same thing. I see it with Quad. I see where the, is it fair? Is it ever fair? It is what it is. I see it. Again, you shot your wad and I don't think the game will really pay it off. I don't. Um, then Toya, again, Toya, just irritating. Toya literally sat on this stage and she's, talking about pro kids and all of this. And she's down talking basically how Eugene was, you know, before they got married. He ordered um, glasses, a drink of, uh, what she say? He ordered 1800. I told him I don't drink that. He ordered a glass. I order bottles. Like, and Andy asked her, like, when did you get so goddamn high for leaving? You know, did you grow up like this? She like, well, no, I grew up in Detroit. Where? Detroit. Okay, girl. I grew up in Detroit. And now my father lived in a place where I wouldn't leave my car out overnight. Excuse me. Didn't your neighbor get robbed right up in your neighborhood? Girl, y'all kill me with this mess. They wiped them out. Anissa. They wiped them out. Like, girl, ain't like crime is everywhere. Just stop it. Stop it and, and stop acting like you all. The girl, get out of here. Get out of here. A mess. Anyway, but she went in this. Oh, you know, my mother moved us to the suburbs when she was she was just in middle school. Like, girl, shut up. Talk about the pro kids and all of that. And they're all our pro wings, rather. They're like, yeah, yeah, we get it, whatever. But you literally sat there and admitted to being materialistic and shallow. And they just were sitting there looking at you. I said, girl, between that dumbass comment, that dumbass attitude, and that dumbass dress, I'd have had enough. And then just, you know, because she thinks she winning. You This whole getting quad voted out, you're not the breakout star, Toya. You're not. You are successful in getting rid of Quad out of the friend group, but you're not the breakout star. You're still Toya. We still don't see you no different. We still think you're ridiculous. We still don't respect you. Still. Ain't nothing changed. Ain't nothing changed. And I, I wish the best for you. But when we're being honest, you still ain't that girl. You still are not that girl. You don't do anything. You don't do anything. You do nothing that nobody, I don't know who who was going, who would talk, tune in to see Toya. If it was, it, you would never get a spinoff. Spin off where? Off of the garbage can into the street? Like what? Nobody would tune in to just watch Toya and Eugene at all. At all. Y'all would never be the premier couple for this show. Never. Y'all are not that interesting. So, you know, congratulations on turning everybody against Quad, and more of that actually came out as we went forth. Anyway, anyhow, so when we started talking about the situation we get in there with the Quad stuff, with Dr. Jackie and her snafu and her situation with being canceled on social media, Phaedra standing up for Jackie. That's where you got to see the real Phaedra. Because again, Phaedra is a lot of different things. There is a sweet, caring, loving person inside of Phaedra too, even with all her mess. But the way that she stuck up for Jackie and stuff, that was that, you know, I've seen that when she was on Housewives and stuff. I know that there is a real woman 
inside of Phaedra. Everything Phaedra does is a mess. You know what I mean? She, she does good stuff too. You know what I mean? So that was really good and refreshing to see there. Um, Dr. Jackie, I saw a different side of you. It's very hard, Dr. Jackie, because you know, everybody, used, we love some Dr. Jackie, love some Dr. Jackie. And people used to always say, oh, Dr. Jackie is mean. Dr. Jackie is disconnected. And I'd be steady. No, not Dr. Jackie. Dr. Jackie is just, you know, her nose is up in the air. I, you know, I always thought she's stuck up and all of that. And that was okay. All of that was okay. But no, Dr. Jackie, your ass is mean. You're mean. And when you're done, you're done. And with everybody except for Curtis. Because the Dr. Jackie that dealt with Curtis in them streets with a hot dick is totally different than the Dr. Jackie that we are dealing with right now. Dr. Jackie sat there and got all emotional about just the thought of being canceled, okay? Because it does matter. She knows that Dr. Jackie make a shitload of money and all of that. And you would think, oh no, she don't need the show. But Dr. Jackie make a shit ton of money on this show as well. And it all does mean something. Her social media presence and the public perception of her is important and it all does, it matters in her bottom line, okay? So as soon as she even thought about that being canceled stuff, that cancel culture yanking her around her neck, you see, it just unnerves her. She got very, very emotional and all of that. But in the midst of all that, she's so goddamn mean that she went through all of this. The ladies, this one called me and then that person called me and instead of, and this turned around and said, I didn't hear from Quad. I mean, like you literally made a point to say, I didn't hear from Quad. Quad has been very subdued the whole time. She ain't even been the regular Quad which is sickening to me because it's like she's over there broken, okay? I ain't used to seeing Quad broken like that. But again, you took a gamble. The gamble didn't pay off. So you got to kind of sit in your shit and try to fix it and try to fix it, you know, or you're done here. If you can't fix this during these three episodes and you still walk away from here and don't nobody want to film with you, you are freaking done. So she really is playing the back. She ain't doing all the extra. Some things she ain't never going to not be able to do, okay? So she's not never going to be able to say, well, I did this wrong, but her butt is going to always be there. She's going to tell you, yes, I did wrong. Yeah, it didn't work out really well with the way I did it. Maybe I should have did it like that. But y'all did stuff to me too, because that's who she is. So we know that. You're not going to take 100% ownership of it like you know, it is what it is. And I did it because of this reason. And that's what they want. That's what they want. But when Jackie did that whole thing, I didn't hear from Quad. Here's the funny part, Dr. Jackie. Yes, it was bad that you were being canceled. But Dr. Jackie, why would you even think that Quad would reach out to her? Why would Quad reach out to you? You're being canceled. Didn't you fucking cancel her, Dr. Jackie? You and your bestie, your old bestie. Didn't you all sit in her face and cancel her? Y'all canceled. Y'all didn't even give her dinner. Y'all told her, uh -uh, girl, pull up. Go and get your little things and don't even finish unpacking. They called her down. Don't even finish unpacking. Roll that shit back up and, and roll on up out of here. So why would you even think that Quad would call you? Why would Quad even think that you want to hear from her? with the way things had left off. Y'all were done with her. It was no surprise. It was none of that. You, you know, there were no questions to be asked. Y'all were done with her and y'all were happy about it. And then we seen in all the little episodes how y'all were done with her. We seen it. Even down to the finale. Y'all were done with her. Y'all were done with her. Y'all didn't, didn't y'all wasn't interested in seeing her walking past her coming in the door and all that. Y'all were done. So no, I thought that was nerve. And I said, wow, Dr. Jackie, really? That that just again, you were really on to me, 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 me. Curtis made you look like a fool on national television. 
And you didn't have none of that smoke for Curtis. None of it. And I mean, I know that's different. He's your husband. I get it. But like, girl, please stop it. Stop it. Anyway, heavenly. Now here's the mess right there with the Jackie thing. Heavenly, you ran Jack all up through this. You was feeling some kind of way too. You turned on Quad. You did. You flat out turned on Quad and you were done with her. And I don't know how that happened or how you got to that place that you got to. Just like I'm going to talk about, I don't know how Quad and Simone got where they got until I watched this tonight. Until I watched this tonight, I never understood what happened because if you've been here the whole time, you know that there was a time when Quad and Simone were very close. And I'm like, did, does, did everybody forget that, that back when uh, Simone was going through all them issues? You know, she had her own personal issues and all of that. Her and Quad were real tight. Real tight. Just like Simone and Heavenly was tight at a point. But I'm like, this is crazy. But I just kind of put it to the back. Like, I don't know. Well, they just don't be getting along. I don't know where it's, come, where it's coming from. But they always seem to fake patch it up or whatever. But Heavenly was running interference and plays all in this stuff. Heavenly is in the midst of everything messy. Whenever Simone and Jackie ain't getting along, Heavenly's running running interference in the middle and the whole thing with quad all of it any everybody in quad heavily is running interference and i'm gonna tell you why it shocks me so much because heavenly and quad were actually really friends not just for tv or any of that they were friends and they they had each other's back and i know it for a fact I know it for a fact, which actually brings us to this, this part of this. Um, let me say this and then I'm going to go into it because I'm saying I know it for a fact. And I know you're like, well, how the hell do you know it for a fact? I'm going to tell you. Here's the thing. Quad overshot. This is where the first part of how all of this got so ugly. Quad overshot her friendship with heavenly you thought you and heavenly were cooler than what y'all actually are and you overshot your your friendship i don't know where things change but i know for a fact how close and how tight they were and how they were riding for each other back early on when heavenly first came on the show okay so here we go let me just go ahead and spill this tea because um a lot of this stuff with Quad not reaching out to Jackie was exposed where Heavenly's ass basically had told Quad not to. They were talking and she was saying, you know, she had called the safe space. It made sense. The safe space was to call Heavenly because this is what they do. This is what y'all's dynamic is. Y'all be talking about each other and discussing each other in the little clicks. She reached out to Heavenly. And Heavenly was like, this is not the time, Quad, for you personally to call Jackie. You fucking ran interference because now Jackie is sitting here looking like a goddamn stone. Talk about how Quad didn't call her, but that was actually your fault. You're the one who actually spoke for Jackie and told Quad it ain't the right time for her. She actually did want to reach out to Jackie and you blocked it. And then you got quiet. You're always running your goddamn mouth. And the other time you were very quiet, like, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I did. But yeah. But again, we got Jackie giving old stone hands over here. She's just stone, complete stone. And then that's when it came out. Not only was it that, Jackie actually believed, and some other people believed that Quad was the one who actually kicked it off that brought up all the old stuff where Jackie was thrown into the cancel culture. Y'all actually were blaming it on Quad. And then she asked Quad, she said that, that she actually reached out to Quad and said, did you have something to do with this? And Quad told her, no, absolutely not. And then you, you took that information 
and you, I don't know if you ran it back to the group or if you just let it ride, but you definitely blocked out Cord from reaching out to Dr. Jackie. And the shit has just snowballed into what we are actually seeing now. And Jackie was already mad, already questioning her, already upset with her, and it just snowballed. And now they can't even get back. Heavenly. Come on. But let me do this, and I, I I hope I don't regret. Well, I, I ain't got no other choice but to do this. Quad get a whole bunch of flack, okay? She get a whole bunch of flack. Is she is she dramatic? Yes. Is she self centered? Yes. Is she's all those things? She's all those things, but she is really not this evil, mean, nasty bitch that people think she is. Okay, y'all, come on in close. Come on in close. Let me share some information with you all that I never, ever thought that I was going to share with you all. You all know I've been doing this show ever since I've been on. I've been reviewing this show. And some things, I, I tell y'all a lot. I share a lot with y'all, but I don't share everything with you all, okay? And one thing that I've never shared with you all, I've always caught a lot of flack because I like quad anyway, and y'all be getting at me. What I've never shared with y'all because it just didn't seem necessary to do because it was just going to cause myself more strife is to say that I have actually, I have access to communicate with Quad and I have communicated with Quad all the way back to when the show, like in season two, in season two of the show. I've always had this interaction with Quad, and I never shared it with you all because that's just not who I am. First of all, I'm not a cloud chaser. Okay. So I'm not a cloud chaser. I don't lean on these reality stars. I generally don't even follow them on social media and be tagging them. And I don't really do all that, but I could actually go in here and actually reach out and get a hold of Quad, okay? And I have actually spoken to her. Um, I would not say that, and I, that's why I say I, I, I've been in communication with. I will say to you all that I am friends with her the way I am friends with T.S. Madison. You all know that I am friends with T.S. Madison. And I kind of wish that I never even actually shared that, but that was kind of done at her hand, that, that her and I, or, you know, that's my girl and all of that. But everybody knows that. So that's kind of that. But with Quad, I never actually shared it because I wanted to be able to just do a fair assessment. My assessments of Quad and Married to Medicine really have nothing to do with the fact that I have communication with her. I drag Quad just like anybody else. Do she like it? No. Y'all know how Quad is. When you say something unfavorable, she don't like that shit, you know, but again, she can reach out to me and say too much, you know, do, you doing too much, you know, or whatever. But there was never any reason for me to share that information with you all. And the reason why I say now that I can't, I, I have no other choice, but to share that is that I can't stand here and really get my point across to tell you about how Squad has overshot her friendship with Heavenly. If you go back to when Heavenly first came on the show, y'all know I could not stand Heavenly. Heavenly used to drive me crazy, and I would be dragging Heavenly, dragging Heavenly. Quad reached out to me. Quad reached out. I want you to listen to me and listen to me very close as well. This video, my phone call with Quad. Quad reached out to me when Heavenly came on to the show and said, you are being so hard on Dr. Heavenly. Give her a chance. She's really funny. She's really a good person. She's real, real cool. If you give her a chance, trust me, you would like Dr. Heavenly, but you're not giving her a chance. Okay? You're not giving her a chance. Now, keep in mind, I've been in communication with Quad all the way since when her and Mariah fell out. And here's the thing. Never has Quad trashed Mariah to me. 
Mm -mm. Was she not happy with the stuff happened went down and they, you know, fell out and all of that? No, she wasn't happy. Of course she was upset with her. But to literally like trash her and dish her tea and all of that, not ever, not one time. Not one time when things have come down the pike that were not true, that she was accused of, she has said, James, no, that's not true. That is not true. But to literally trash her, mm -mm. you know, people do on Mad Day, not one time. But she literally reached out and told me, give Dr. Heavenly a chance. And I literally did ease up off of Dr. Heavenly and started really paying attention. And then I was like, damn, Dr. Heavenly is funny. You know, but you know, I ain't never broke back from it's like when she do too much, I say she do too much. I give fair assessments of marriage to medicine. And I can do that because I think I'm a fair person. You know what I mean? But this is why I've never shared these things with you all, because I catch hell with you all anyway. And y'all didn't even know that I'm in communication. But trust me, I have been in communication with Qua, Sister Circle, the cookbook, all that. It goes so deep as, and again, I don't consider her a friend. I am, I am still, I am a fan. I just have access to have communication. And I don't bother her. Very busy woman. Very busy woman. I don't bother her because what for what? If I have a question about something, by all means. But to try to get something from her or try to get, that's not, that ain't even how I, mm -mm. I built my channel from the ground up. And that's how I like it. I don't want nobody to try to drag my stuff along or blow my stuff up. Because if nobody blows you up, and you blow up on your own, can't nobody take the wind from up underneath your shit. So I've always liked it like that. I've always liked it like that. I, I don't clout chase. So I'm sitting here telling you, it's just the way you do it. Again, I could pick up that phone right now and call T.S. Madison, and T.S. Madison will pick up that phone. And if she don't pick it up, she will call me back within minutes. But do it does that have to translate into views and all and i always get that people are always coming about at me about she don't owe me anything and i don't want anything i don't want anything i i just i like her like i like her that's my sister period same thing with quad over and beyond let's go back and i'm gonna move this along i know y'all like okay you got we got it you talked to quad okay but quad back when she was married to Dr. Greg, back in 2015, when I was battling with cancer, Quad and Dr. Greg were actually out of the country. I was at Allegheny General Hospital in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and my phone rang. And it was Quad and Dr. Gregory was in the room. And they, she wanted to know what was going on. How was I? Was I OK? And well wishes and prayers to me. This is what she did. I am just one of the many of fans of hers. So she really is not this nasty person. You know what I mean? She's just not that. She's not that person. She cool. She's all right. And she do have feelings. And she is really what you see. Is she over? Yeah, she's over dramatic as shit. That's the stuff she do. That's who she is as a person. But I just, I, I I never wanted to share this information with you all. And she never said, don't tell anybody. She's never done that. That was always my choice, not to share that information. So I could continue to do what it is that I do and give my fair assessment of what I'm watching my girl do on television. Y'all know when I did the, the fashions on here, I tore up about the fact I don't even know how she feels about that because we had no conversation about that. But I didn't like none of that shit about her look for this reunion. But I came right on out and said what it is that I had to say. No holes barred. I'll be fair. But she was crazy about Dr. Heavenly. She was crazy about Dr. Heavenly. And they were cool and they were riding for each other. Called right to Pittsburgh. Like you are being too, too, you're not seeing her 
you're not seeing her like you like you need to see her. I don't know what you what 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 you have up that you can't see her. But with your personality and her personality, you would like her. And sure enough, sure enough, and it took a while. It took a while. We're talking seasons before I actually said, well, damn, when I really started liking Dr. Heavily was during the pandemic. During the pandemic, when she started coming on YouTube, I could really see Dr. Heavily. I said, she is a goddamn hoot. You know what I mean? So I, I said all that to say that. Um, I don't know. This whole thing might backfire in my face and y'all may be dragging me, but it don't make no difference. It don't make no difference. I had to make my point and I could not make my point as to why I felt so strong because I know for a fact they were tight. I know for a fact that her and Simone was tight. And then I was so hurt because, you know, I loved I loved me some Simone. Simone and Cecil, they were actually my favorite couple. I'm so disappointed. I still love Simone, but I'm so disappointed with Simone. Simone is weak. She is weak and she is too goddamn old to be doing this. And she's evil as hell. She evil as hell. I like drunk Simone that be cracking up laughing and telling jokes that she shouldn't be telling and Kiki and a cackling. That's the Simone I love. This old evil ass Simone, she evil as hell evil as hell. I couldn't stand when her and Cecil were at each other's necks when they were trying to get a divorce. But then I understood why she was mad because Cecil didn't let that other woman infiltrate what they had going on. Whether it was foul play or not, her presence shook your marriage. So that was stupid on Cecil's part. So I understood why she was so evil. But for her to sit her ass over there and say that your whole problem with Quad is literally because Toya said so? Are you serious right now? Everything else you were saying went in the garbage, Simone. All this, she doesn't invite me to her house and this, that thing and the other. All that, okay. Yeah, that might be, keep you in your feelings. See, me personally, I wouldn't give a damn if nobody ever invited me to their house because I got my own. So I ain't one. I don't want to come over your house. The hell? I don't, I don't give a shit about no stuff like that. I got my own goddamn lily pad. Okay? But okay, I understand that. If that 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 touched you in a way. But when she said y'all went to dinner and then you were saying you, you know, you didn't want to do anything to make you have an issue with Toya. So literally, Toya pushed you and made you choose between her and Quad is what you were saying. That's not what I said. That's what you said. No, there's not an effects. No, ain't no real big issue, but I'm not going to do anything to damage or deter my friendship with Toya. You literally were forced by Toya to choose between Quad and Toya. How old are you again? You don't sit your goddamn ass down somewhere. So I'm sitting there and I'm saying, okay. And this is what I was really hating. This is really what I was hating. You all literally, yes, she did things y'all didn't like. And I get it. I get it. But y'all weren't as mad over the things that she's done that y'all didn't like as y'all were over the fact that she wouldn't kiss y'all's ass. That was the big shebang, is that she literally would not, she was too headstrong, y'all couldn't humble her, and she wouldn't kiss y'all's ass. And y'all are making her pay for it. And this is the part that I don't like, because this all feels now like Quad is groveling. And she you can see her pulling herself back, like, this ain't even what I do, like, I'm the girl that tells these bitches to kiss it. But for whatever reason, she can't, she just can't bring herself to do it. So she's in this tailspin and you can see her battling back and forth. You see her expressions on her face keep changing. This ain't, this is real. This ain't her acting and carrying on, you know, because she she be genuine with her shit. But again, when she do the extra, you know when she's doing the extra, like, you know, this is my life. 
that that was real emotion, but that was her Joan Crawford shit on top of it. Okay, you know, I'm still making TV, but this right here, mm -mm. and Simone, just to show how nasty and mean you really are, you and Jackie, I am just, I can't even, I, I, I never thought I'd see today. But you and Jackie, just nasty. Y'all was right up in there in the, oh, I'm going to bring my meanest bitch out. Y'all are nasty. Nasty. Everything was put out there about why the, you know, the, the no response from Quad. It was all laid right out on the table for you. And you just like stone. It doesn't matter because you're not hearing her because you still want to believe that she has something to do with that because heavenly then let it roll and let it fester. Let it roll and let it fester. And it had been all these months. It was heavenly that told her don't reach out to you. It wouldn't be a good idea. And it has festered and rolled. But with it being all right there, you still, this girl done broke down and tear. Well, the, the tears don't even work on them anymore because just done with you. And you're telling her, Jackie, like, I would never do that to you. Like, I can't believe that you would think that I would do that to you. And she was standing there. And I mean, Jackie did not. Jackie's face. Jackie was just as dead behind her eyes. That's her looking at Quad. While Quad is broken, breaking down in tears, telling her it was this, telling her, I would never do that to you, Jackie. I love you. I would not do that. Girl, dead behind the eyes. Completely dead, completely done. Last time we seen Jackie with that face was Buffy. And you said she dead and done with Buffy. She didn't give a fuck what Buffy said. She was done. Simone Stone mad about nothing because you're not mad about nothing all you know is that you were told you had to make a choice and you made a choice even heavenly said okay but why are you mad that's not right for you to be mad at her because you had to make a choice stone jackie and some i was so disappointed with the two of them so disappointed but and then jackie was right in there in it like she had rehearsed it like totally disconnected until she used her words back on her. We're not connected. To, I said, oh, that is some mean old shit. Mean, 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 mean. But that's it. That's really all I had to say. Like I said, um, am I taking Quad's side? No, I'm not taking her side. I get it. I, I've been here. I've been here through the whole thing. I see this when you to say that there's levels to this shit is an understatement. This is a lot. This is a lot. It really is a lot. And it is sad to watch. It is hard to watch. But um, yeah, I, I can't even. What I need for Quad to do is just let it go. I think you better let it go. It is what it is. It's over. And this, you on here groveling and trying to be their friend. They don't want to be friends. And all of the, the way their behavior is, fuck it. I don't, I don't even, th I mean, beyond, at this point, it really couldn't be about nothing but a check because why would you even want to be involved with any of them? Why would you even want to be involved with any of them, heavenly included? Heavenly included. And I'm not taking any of the validity away from what Heavenly had to say. At a point, she felt as though Quad was user. I know that <clears throat> when Quad became part of the sorority and when she was on the sister circle, she really did hurt them. She really did hurt them. You know, there was a point she could see that the tables were turning and all that. And she hurt them. She let them know that she don't get, you know, I, I ain't got to be with you all. I don't have to be with you all. So now you can't backpedal on pussy pop. That's a gamble. That's again, that's in life. You take some gambles. Some you win, some you don't. Some you can repair, some you can't. But at this point, the way that they are sitting, I can't even imagine wanting to be around them. I can't. I can't. Can't imagine even wanting to be around them. 
But anyway, that's all I had to say. Thank you all for watching. Listen, leave me some comments. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you think. Um, and don't, you ain't got to take it easy on me. I got a nice strong back. Um, I can imagine what some of you all will have to say, especially at the fact that I've kept secrets from y'all, but there really was no purpose in sharing that information. It wasn't going to make me look any better. It wasn't going to make Quad look any better. It really was my own personal thing. You know, she reached out to me. We communicated about whatever we communicated about. It didn't really have anything to do with you all. So there was no need for me to share it. And I didn't need her net to use her name to make me look any better. I am Spill It Boy TV and I stand on my own. I didn't need Quad Web Lunsford nor Quad Web's name to do anything for me. I'm perfectly fine with exactly what I have and I'll get to wherever I'm going on my own without the use of T.S. Madison's name or Quad's name or any other celebrities that I've been in contact with that you all don't know about, Shh, it's not your business. It's not your business. And trust me, this platform does allow me conversations and interactions that normally I wouldn't have. Everything is not for public consumption. I'll say that and I'm out of here. I will talk with you all later. I will be back next week with the review for the part two of Mary to Madison. I still love my show, but my show is different now. It has a different feel. It watches different. It's, it comes across different. It, it, it lost a little something. It lost a little something. Like it feel like it, it feels like it lost a little prestige. Like, like for some reason we don't need to have our nose up so high in the air anymore. But, um, we could figure it out and put it back up in the air, child. Anyway, all right, you all. I will talk with you later.